Sometimes you might be using make and using the API of any tool and you may need to make a custom API call because maybe a module or an endpoint is not supported or simply because you want the ability to customize your call more and have more control over what data types you use and how you structure your API request. In this video, we are looking exactly at how you can use the custom API calls module available for any app in Make, particularly using Notion as a proxy to discuss the logic of making custom API calls, when to use that module, how to use it practically, and then also how to use the HTTP module when an app is not supported in Make, but it does have a REST API. By make an API call in Make, I mean this module that is available on almost any app, as far as I know. And you can see here, for this example, we're looking at the Notion module in Make, and there are different actions. These are based on the Notion API endpoints. And one of those modules is make an API call that performs an arbitrary authorized API call. So this allows you to customize the API call as you wish, following the Notion API documentation with the added advantage that you do not need to handle the authorization in your API call, which you would need to do if you were to use the HTTP module, for example, where you will need to go through the documentation on that app to see how you can authorize and authenticate that request before sending it. So making a custom API call in Notion can happen in two situations, as far as I can tell. The first possible reason why you may use the make an API call, whether it be Notion or any other tool, is when the endpoint that you need to use is not natively supported in Make. For example, in Notion, there is an endpoint in the API documentation that you can find at developers.notion.com that is used to delete blocks. A block in Notion can be a page, it can be a database, it can be a block of text or an image. Pretty much anything is a block in Notion. And you can see here, when I go to the blocks section in, within the endpoints in the Notion API documentation, I can see delete a block as an option. But when I am in Make and I use the Notion module, there is no native module that allows me to delete a block. And that is when I will use the Make an API call to send delete request to the dedicated endpoint of the Notion API. That is option number one. The second scenario when you might use Make an API call, whether it be Notion or any other tool, is when you want to have more control over how you structure the API request. In particular, in Make, the Notion app with the native modules provided by Make uses property names in the body of the request. For example, when creating a database item, instead of the property IDs, the Notion modules in Make use the property names. And as you may have experience with if you've used Notion, due to the highly flexible structure of their databases, it can often happen that you or people using that database edit the property names. And when that happens, if you're using that property in an API call within a make module, because the make module it's using the property name instead of the property ID, that module will fail the next time it runs. So that can create a bit of complications, as you can see in the maintenance of the API request that you make through the make modules. And that is when you may use the make an API call in order to format the body of your request using the property IDs, which you may retrieve dynamically from make as well using dedicated endpoint or another API call so that the IDs will persist over time because IDs of properties are fixed in Notion. They do not change even when you change the property name. And that would make your automation less error prone and more stable over time, very likely. So these are the two main scenarios when you may use make an API call as a module in Make. Let's look at the first example. I select the make an API call module in Make and let's assume that we want to delete a page in a database. And that page is part of this task database, and it is this page specifically. So for that, we need to use the delete a block endpoint in the Notion API, because I can see here that this API endpoint sets a block object, which includes page blocks, because pages are blocks in Notion, to archived true. So when we call this endpoint, the page or the block will be archived. So if it is a page, that means that it is a retrievable in Notion from the trash icon, which you can find right here at the bottom of the left sidebar menu. And we also know that the endpoint 
for this request is the following one api.notion.com slash b1 slash blocks slash block id where the block id is the block that we're going to delete that is unique for each block in notion now if we go to the make module i can see that here we need to enter the url and you can see that the authentication is already handled by make if you already connected your workspace the bot in your notion workspace in make you can select that and that is handled already now we need to enter the url and in particular the path relative to the notion api url for the api requests in this case so for example you can see that is slash v1 slash users in our case we want to use the delete block endpoint and that would be slash v1 slash blocks slash block id i just copy pasted it from the documentation right here now we need to replace the block id with the actual block that we want to delete and for that we will need to use the page id to get the page id if you have a more elaborate scenario you might have the page id retrieved in a previous module and then pass that as a parameter dynamically from the previous module in this example i'm using a fixed page id just to explain the logic of how the of how this works but in a real world scenario maybe you are syncing your google calendar with notion and you want to sync deleted google calendar events with notion pages so in that case you might have a logic in your scenario and in particular a router branch that filters out for updated events in google calendar where the status is cancelled and if that is the case then you can make this custom api call to delete or archive the page in notion so that your sync remains synced all the time in this case i'm heading to notion just to get the page id that i want to use and to get the page id i can get the url either from the address bar or i can just get the whole url and then you will see that the page id of any notion page is this random string of text and numbers the notion version is automatically set by make the method in this case would be delete which i can see from the documentation here and here you can see different methods the get method retrieves data this is often used when searching across Notion databases with the search objects endpoint, for example. Or if you want to retrieve recently updated or newly created pages from that basis. Post creates new content. In the Notion case, that can be a new block of text on a page. It can be a new page in a database. It can be a new database itself. Put and patch are used for updating resources in the API. In the Notion case, that might be updating properties in a page as part of a database it can be updating a block of text or any other supported block in the api and the difference between put and patch is that put updates the resource and returns the whole resource properties not just the updated ones whereas patch only returns the updated properties this is more of a technical difference in the api world and the notion there is no patch currently so when you update something you get the for example, if you update a database, you do not just get the properties that were updated in response to your request, but you get the whole properties of that database. And then there is delete, which is self-explanatory, and that is used for deleting a specific resource in the API that you're using. And that's what we are using for this example. Then you can see that in the headers, make automatically adds content type application slash JSON because that seems to be a requirement from the Notion API. In addition, you can have query string. Query string parameters are what you might append to the API request. Depending on the endpoint, there might be some list string parameters that are allowed. But in this case, in the delete endpoint, there are no list string parameters. And I can see that from the description of this endpoint in the API documentation. I can see there are path parameters, which is the block ID, and the block ID is already included in the URL of the request. So we do not need to use that in the, the string parameters. And then there is the headers, that is Notion version, which we already have because Make already included that by default. And then there is also the body of the request. And the body of the request might be used, for example, in the Notion API case, when you create a page that is part of the database, you can include the properties that you want to fill out within the request body. And in Make, you can use JavaScript to format your request bodies. In this case, here as well, there are no parameters that we can use in the request body because here we are just deleting a page. In the next example, we will actually see how to use the request body in the make an API call in Lake. Now we have this page open in Notion and you can see that currently this is existing still in the database. Now let's go to make and let's do okay and try to run this module. 
already and you can see that apparently I got an error message. I find this happens quite often, specifically with the delete a block endpoint when making an API call and it says error passing JSON body. And the way to fix this in my experience is to just remove the content type headers. When I do that, and then I run this module again, I can see this is successful. Here I can also see the response of the API, which tells me which block was actually deleted with the ID, the parent, database ID, child pages. And now if I go back to Notion, I can see that this page was indeed deleted, which means it is in the trash. And if I want, I can restore it or delete permanently. And if I go back to the database, that page is not here anymore. In the second example in this video, we are going to look at how you can use make an API call to create a page in a Notion database. In particular, we are going to create a page in the same task database that we used for the page deletion. So that's going to be this database right here. And we are going to create a task or a page in this database. To do that, we we'll use the create a page endpoint in the Notion API. There's also a native make module for this, but because the purpose of this video is to look at how we can use the make an API call module for custom API calls, we are going to do it this way. And you can see here the endpoint this time, it is a post request at slash v1 pages. And when I scroll down, I will find that there are some body parameters that are required, some other ones that are not required, so optional, if you want to include them or not. So you will need to structure the body of the request in a specific way in order for that custom API call to be effective and to output, therefore, a success message that is a 200 message that leads to the page creation in the Notion database. To understand how we need to structure the request body, we can look at the example here and the right hand side of the Notion documentation where we can see JavaScript or shell command. And you can see here how the body is structured. We can forget about this when using make an API call in Notion because we do not need to craft that request in this way because that is already handled by make itself. Instead, we are looking at the body of the request which starts at this curly bracket right here and it includes the cover image if we want to include it, the icon on the page, the database ID where we are creating that page and then an array that is called properties to populate the properties within the database with the content that we need. For example, we can see here in this example request we have the name property that is of type title. Title means the primary key in the Notion database for the user that is expandable. And then we can see here how the title property is structured. That is an object containing text and then content and then the name that we want to give to that page. And then you can see here, this is a comma and then we have description. So that's another property in this example request. And description is a property of type text and the rich text object takes the text and the content similar to the title structure. Then there is food group that is a select property type that takes the name or the ID if you prefer. And you can find all the structures of property objects in the dedicated section in the Notion API documentation. When you look at database, you can go to database properties and see how each property needs to be structured for a request to be successful. Now when we go back to the create a page endpoint, we can also see that we can include text or any content inside the page that we create. And that is represented by this children object that takes different blocks, as you can see here, and a block can be of type text, heading to, it can be an image, it can be an embed. And here as well, we can see all the supported blocks in the dedicated section in the Notion API documentation. So let's go back to make, and we can see here we have make an API call. This time we're gonna create a page and the same exact panel as before applies. In this case, in the URL, we're using slash b1 slash pages that is taken from the documentation. And this is a post request. We're going to keep the header and then we just need to populate the body. So what I did here is I copied all of these from here all the way down here and I pasted it in the text editor just to format it properly. I then removed the console log statement and this parenthesis here because we do not need this and just kept the body of the request. I then copied the request in a text editor and edited it accordingly. So here is my notepad to show you exactly what this request looks like. So we have first a curly bracket. This is needed to format the body as JSON so that it is valid in the make request that we are sending. Then we have the cover. So we want to populate the cover image 
that is what appears at the very top of the page and we are using an external image that is the only possible option right now when Wokum defines in Notion and the external URL is this one that is a random URL that generates the image and there is the icon on the page type is emoji and emoji is this one then we have the parent that is the database where we are creating this page so it's a database id and then the database id is this one here we can also get these dynamics if i make as part of the of a more elaborate scenario if you are retrieving the database or using the database already in previous steps you can dynamically pass that to this object in the request body in this case i'm hard coding it to show how it works then we have the properties object and in this case i changed the task name because that's what my property is named like in Notion. So if I'm looking at the Notion database, I can see that here, the name of the title is task name. So I need to use this name in the representation on the request body. Type is title, and then the task will be called a task. And then here you can see that we have the children object because I also want to include some content inside the page, and that will be a heading to with the text description, and then another block that is a paragraph with the text being this description that is copy pasted from the example in the Notion API documentation. And then all the parentheses are closed. And at first I copied this one in the make request body, but that gives an error because there are some spaces in that formatting. And when you paste it in make, it doesn't format the JSON properly. And so the Notion API throws an error. So that is not really optimal. Therefore, what I did is I copied the whole body request into the browser address bar so that it becomes a contiguous string and there are no extra spaces or extra characters that we do not need. And this makes the request work. So I find in my experience, it's always best to format the request body outside of make because this box here is definitely not user-friendly, at least in my experience. You can't see everything. There might be spaces that are not accounted for that would then throw errors. So I usually format the request outside of make in Visual Studio Code or a text editor of your choice. And then I reformat it just in the pasting it in the address bar to then paste it back into make to make it work. So in here, when I do OK, I can then run this module only for testing purposes. And if I go to Notion, I can now see there is a task in the database. And I did not populate the other properties for simplicity, but of course we could populate all of them. And you can see there is the emoji, there is the cover image, and there is the description block and the description text on the task. And that is how you can create a page using make an API call in make through the Notion module. Finally, if you're using an app that is not supported in make, or if you just want to go completely your way, you can use the HTTP module that is right here. And you can send an HTTP request to the make a request module to any API that you want. You can also show advanced options to throw errors when the response is not two or 300, then you can use the full URL of the API endpoint that you're using. You will need to include the headers for authentication purposes, and that will depend on the API that you're using. So you will need to check their documentation to understand how that works. Then you can set the body, parse the response, and set all these other parameters that are needed, sometimes not needed for the API that you're using. And that is it for now. That is how you can use the make an API call in make whether it be using the notion app which we delved into in this video or if you're using any other app the same principles apply and as long as you understand the structure of the api of that tool and read the documentation and follow it precisely you will be successful in making api calls in make to the dedicated modules see you in the next one